In this video, I travel off to the lakeside to help my mom transform a dark, rustic, cabin chic corner in her home into the cozy reading nook of her dreams. We're building custom storage, building some custom bookshelves, getting thrifty, and making this space a place she's never gonna wanna leave. Hey, my friends! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and I am not in my home. No, I am currently at my mom's place. Woo! So I am visiting my mom in her cozy cabin home, yep. and we are going to be transforming a cozy cabin nook. Right. Ooh, cozy, Ooh, cabin cozy cabin reading, reading nook. nook. Reading nook yep. in your home. Yep. It's very exciting. We're gonna be doing a whole makeover. We're bringing, we're bringing organization, we're bringing storage, and we're bringing the love of books into this love video. It. You don't wanna miss it. So with that said, let's just get into it. Let's go. Oh, and if you're new here, hello, welcome. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and join this lovely DIY family. <laughs> we love to do all things home and DIY. We and, and do. And we do. We do. We do. So with that said, let's get into it. Editor, roll the tape. <laughs> so here is the space in question. This cozy little nook in my mom's cottage home is complete with rough pine boards, cedar shake panels, and a small window. There is a small bathroom off this space, which we won't be touching, but we will be removing the curtain because mom is going to install a sliding door on the inside after we're done. Our goal was to create storage, a cozy reading spot, and a bookshelf for all the books that currently don't have a home, which let me tell you are everywhere in this cozy cabin. Floors, nooks, just everywhere. <laughs> okay, so this is a cozy, a cozy corner for sure. Yes. It's feeling very rustic cabin chic in here. <laughs> <laughs> very dark, rustic it's cabin dark. chic. It is very dark. In this corner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think the first goal we talked about was brightening this corner up because it is very dark. It doesn't have a lot of natural light because there's a lot of cedar trees outside. And even though there is a window, the sunlight doesn't come directly through this. So I think we're going to paint up the walls. I mean, we have some cedar shake over here and some rough wood over here so I think you know it's gonna have still that like rustic look to it mm -hmm. but I think making it bright brighter is gonna bring a lot to this space and just really brighten it up but we are going to leave the ceiling as wood just to mm -hmm. keep that rustic coziness we're also then gonna start building storage cabinets that are gonna run this, this wall. Big lower cabinets that you can open up have storage. You have storage above. And then we'll do bookshelves all the way across here to this little jut down here. And then we can do like an open bar area here for yep. your drinks and glasses and all that. So I think I'm gonna get started on building the cabinets cause that's gonna take some time. Yep. <laughs> and you can get started on painting. Yep. Deal? Deal. Yes. Let's do it! <laughs> so pretty. Got a whole waterfront view and the air outside right now just smells like campfire. It's so lovely. Kenobi is just on cloud nine. Yes, you are, buddy. Sticks for days. <laughs> Welcome to the shop. I can see my breath. <laughs> we have a cutting station. We have a pocket hole station back here. Off the truck here, we have my chopping station and uh, my table saws over here. We're, we're ready to go. We got it all. Kenobi, do not bring that stick over here. All right, what we need to do is we need to start chopping some wood. So I have this plywood here. I asked for three quarter inch, but mom got me five eight. So we're gonna have to make it work. <laughs> It's a one side good, which means that one side is technically good and one side's not as good. So we're gonna put the not as good side on the inside um, and hopefully it looks okay. I got my full cut list. We have about, I think, four sheets of plywood that we need to do a full cut up list. So let's get started and uh, let's start making some cabinets. Yahoo! <laughs> and I gotta start moving around because I'm getting cold.
All right, so a voiceover Danny coming in hot uh, before my mom kills me. <laughs> Just want to say that her local hardware store only had five eight inch plywood, one good side. So she tried to get me that three quarter inch, but this is what we had, so we're making it work. There's always a way, even if the situation isn't as ideal as you want it to be, we're just going with it. To cut all my wood, I was using a combination of my Craig Rip Cut Circular Saw Jig, my Table Saw, my Miter Saw, and my AccuCut Saw Track Guide. We had a full-on outdoor shop here, folks, and I gotta say, having my saw on the back of my truck made me truly feel like a truck person. Like, I know I own a truck, but you really don't feel like a true truck person until you cut some wood on the back, you know? <laughs> now, while I was busy cutting wood outside in the cold, my mom was busy inside the warm home painting away. To brighten up those walls, we were using the color Antique White by Bear. It's really warm, it's got a very brown undertone, and the goal was not to take away the rustic vibe. We both rather liked it, so mom was simply giving the wood kind of a dry brush effect. I mean, painting rough pine is already quite difficult, so really just rolling over this once was going to give us that look we desired naturally. Let me tell you, I had four full 4x8 sheets to cut and I was hauling butt to get these done quickly and accurately as possible because a dark cloud was rolling in and uh, my outdoor shop was not gonna fly in this. Okay, we have made it inside. It's officially freezing rain outside. That's fun for us. <laughs> but these walls look great, Mom. You did a great job painting. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, I love so how fresh. rustic it is. Yeah. And that's all done on purpose. Like when we talked about how we wanted the boards to look, mm -hmm. we said, okay, let's not put a primer on it because we really wanted that wood uh, tannins to come through mm -hmm. and make it feel like it's a little bit more like as if we did like a, uh, a dry brush. A dry brush. I kept going at a dry rub. I'm like clearly got chicken <laughs> fingers or <laughs> chicken wings on my mind. Uh, a dry brush kind of look, but it looks great. And it is brighter in here. Yeah. It's just a super dark day. So we packed inside because it did start raining. So we're building all of the cabinets inside. We actually went and built one already. So we have this guy down here, essentially keeping it really simple. This is actually the back of it. There's going to be no top because it's going to be made up of uh, a piece of plywood. We have our bottom, we got our tops that are empty, and our two sides. So I built one with mom so that she felt confident <laughs> to continue forward while we do it on camera. I'm so bad with tools. It's okay. No, you're so doing bad. a great job. I'm so bad. You just okay. gotta put some power behind the, the drilling, you know? I've seen you chop wood, I've seen you go at weeds, the, the weed whackers, like you can drill. You can put a screw in a board. All right, let's go build Feeling three. Confident. Let's Woohoo! Go. That's what I like to hear. Let's go build three cabinets. Yes! Probably. That's my favorite. Right? Mine's some Twix. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. So after our little chocolate boost break here, mom and I had one more cabinet to build. The only difference with this one was that the outer wall, which was the visible side, hopefully that makes sense, was going to be longer so that it covered over the two by four brace that I will be building momentarily. 
This just provided a nice seamless look on the only side that people were gonna see. And this was the only cabinet that needed any sort of pocket hole application to hide screws, so that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> that was quite a journey between cutting this wood and then assembling this wood. But now I have four cabinets. Pretty happy about that. I'm sitting on the floor because I want to build the two by four frame that all four uh, cabinets are gonna sit on. And then that is how I'm gonna end my day. Cause this is gonna take like five minutes now that we have all the pieces cut. So I'm just doing two eight foot pieces with um, cross braces across it. And then the the bar cabinet area, which is over here, is gonna have two pieces that I cut at a 45 degree angle that butt up together just so they look nice. I might put an apron in front of it, but just in case if I was like looking at it being like, oh, we don't need an apron, at least it looks nice and cohesive on that corner. So I am gonna start putting this together and then we can get the cabinets on top and then we're done. <laughs> Sitting feels really good though, I'm not gonna lie. Ma! I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did some good work today. <laughs> Good morning, friends. It is dark and it is rainy today, but no problem, Bob, because we're inside. So last night, we kind of had a small epiphany. We were looking at the cabinet and I was a little worried about how the birch plywood was going to stain up. And then mom was like, I really just, I kind of just want to paint it. Like I want a nice color to contrast the white. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's do it. So we have this green cabinet paint that we went and got this morning and it's beautiful. So I'm not even gonna show you the color yet. Like we'll, we'll get there. But what I have mom doing down here right now, she's using the DAP premium wood filler and she's just filling in all the plywood edges. <laughs> Make sure you get that spot there. All the holes of the plywood, we're just filling that in and then we're just gonna sand it and it'll make it nice and smooth for painting. It just removes you from seeing those plywood edges, which are really icky and we don't want that. So that's what mom's working on right now. I also got started on making sure that the apron was finished. The two by four is kind of icky. So I yesterday I had cut this apron and the apron runs all the way across. But again, it has that icky plywood edge. So mom's also going to fill that in. The only thing that we are edge banding and then painting are the doors because I just want them to look beautiful mint. So I also have mom edge banding. She set up a whole little area in the bathroom. So she's going to be edge banding on the sink. Uh, we'll make sure we show you guys what that looks like. So I'm going to get started on the bookshelves. Now it's going to basically have a shell, which is going to have a top and a bottom, the sides, and then there's going to be one shelf that won't be movable. This is just going to stabilize it and give it that stability that it needs. But the other shelves are going to be adjustable. So I'm I'm going to be drilling little holes that can uh, get little pegs in it. The shelves that are going to be structurally intact are gonna get doweled into the side so you don't see anything. So I got a lot of work ahead of me, so we better get started, Mom. Okay. Well, you already got started. I better get started. <laughs> I'm behind, I'm panicking. Go ahead, high five me. No, I'm good. Well, I think I'll just let you be. Let's get started. 
these bookshelves were relatively simple to put together. Like I mentioned, this bookshelf was going to be made up of three sections, which consisted of four vertical tiers, a horizontal top and bottom, and three horizontal center shelves that would not be movable as they were structural supports, and these would be secured in with dowels. Each section will have two shelves, one on the top and one on the bottom that will have three placement options depending on the book sizes and each shelf would be held using these little shelf pegs. Anywhere that wasn't going to be seen, like the side that was butting up against the wall, I honestly just simply glued and screwed in place. But I will say that I did make a small error in my dowel placement on the shelf that actually did matter. So I actually just ended up screwing it in place. On It wasn't ideal, but it didn't really matter ultimately because we were going to paint it. So I just filled in the screw hole and you'll never see it. Uh, it just wasn't what I wanted, but accidents happened and uh, we solved and moved on. So it fits. <laughs> I mean, we do need to take this little quarter round trim that's at the top out and then it'll fit nice and flush. But the good news is that it fits. <laughs> it's a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> the only thing that bothers me is, is the fact that I, like the, the drawer cabinets don't line up with the library because of the offset. That's like my only irk. And nobody else will say it and get irked by it either. That's right. That's right. Yes. Just know that bothers me too. <laughs> okay? Oh my God. <laughs> To end the day, I went through all the doors and started trimming off all the excess on the edge banding that my mom did. Of course, <laughs> I had forgotten my proper edge banding trimmer, so I was just using a box cutter, which is fine, just not as ideal, and then filled in any spots with wood filler on both the doors and the bookshelf, so we would be ready to go for tomorrow. Phew, what a day. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Yesterday was a day. Mom and I didn't even start till late in the day, so by the time we actually got rolling, it was quite dark. So our filming was just atrocious yesterday because we were like panicking and trying to get things done, but we did work late into the night. We got every all the doors prepped, all of this is prepped. So now we can start sanding um, and really just bring this whole space together. I got mom on sanding duty for all of the doors. I'm gonna get on here, we're gonna pull this down. I'm gonna attach the top here. I also have a piece of trim that's gonna go on the edge. It's rounded, so it really just makes it nice and uh, finished looking. Uh, and there's a piece of trim that I gotta pull out from up here so that the, this can lay flush to the back. And then I'm gonna start sanding up every piece here and then, and then we can start painting. And then I feel like it's really gonna be transformed. You ready? Ready. <laughs> she's I'm like mustering everything I've got right now. She's like, I just want to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're on sanding duty. I'm on whatever I'm doing, and uh, we're gonna get her done. Yeah. yeah let's go do it. <laughs> Thank you.
So we're gonna start painting the top because we wanna be able to get the bookcase on top, but we need to paint that first because we don't wanna have it like half painted. It'll just be icky. So mom's cleaning up the paint here. Let's see the color. Oh, it's so pretty. So this is called Rapture by Beauty Tone. It's a cabinet and furniture paint. So this does have a bit of a sheen to it. Easy to clean, durable. This green against the wood and then with the white, like that's just beautiful. And then while we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna take all the doors outside because we're gonna be putting trim all on the outsides to beauty them up. Okay, give it a pour. Very exciting, first coat. Go. You've been waiting for this moment. Oh my God. For days. Two days. We've only been at this for two days. Like, only two days, I know. It just seems like a lifetime, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, that looks great. <gasps> oh, I love it. Do you love it? I do, I love it. Oh, it looks so good. Ooh, dancing with the devil, not putting any tape down. <laughs> oh my gosh. More paint? Dancing with the devil over there. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, from afar, the green looks fairly nice. Okay, so we're outside. We're waiting for paint to dry. We have this trim here, and we're going to create a trim detail around all the doors. It's just going to make it look a little less like we made doors with plywood. <laughs> kind of moment. Uh, it's just gonna finish it off and make it look nice, especially once we paint it up. It'll give it like a really nice little detail. So uh, I'm gonna get measuring and cutting and then I will let you do the brad nailing on oh, here. Okay. Never done that before. Super easy, I'll show you. Okay. We'll do it safely. Sure. I have to just come in here and say that I was really proud of my mom at this moment. She had never used a brad nailer before and I could tell she was nervous, but I gave her a quick tutorial on safety and we were off to the races. We worked hard to get all the doors finished and this did take quite some time, but we got it done and we also ended up mudding all the doors to make the trim look nice and finished. Okay, so this moment kind of sucked. We were finally getting this shelf on the wall and uh, it didn't lay flush. I ended up removing a half round trim from that ceiling, thinking that this would solve the problem, but there was actually a piece of wood behind that that also stopped it from laying flush and uh, <laughs> it was just a bummer. So I'm just gonna use my multi-tool here and we're just gonna go burp and burp and just remove it so that this thing can sit flush and just look so much better. It's more work, but it's gonna look so much better. Not gonna lie, friends, this process was not the most fun. I had to cut through wood and nails, but luckily I had the right blade to do so. But boy, this was a workout on the arms and it was just so dusty. Oh gosh, what a mess. I wanted the dust to settle before I cleaned it up. So I headed outside to meet mom and before it got too dark, we just started painting the doors. I was a little afraid that it was too cold to be painting outside. So we just kind of got the first layer on, then brought them inside to dry. We could definitely find dry space, but it was just very challenging to find a space to paint at the same time. So this worked for us. We did finally get the bookcase into place and it did sit right against the wall. What a bloody miracle, friends. <laughs> Look at that. Right in. It's flush to the wall. <laughs> then I got it secured into the cabinets and the wall using screws and L brackets and finally we could start painting. Woohoo!
Okay, friends, we're almost there. <laughs> I have one of the doors half painted. I wanna get the hardware on, install the door, and then paint the backside from there because it'll be easier. We just, we're running out of space. This is the hardware we're gonna be putting on the door. Very simple, not over the top. It's not a self-closing or soft close. It's just your basic, you know, a door hinge. I kind of like it though. It's very antique -y looking. This isn't a brush antique brass hard to say and then for the knobs we are going with these lovely loons <laughs> that did come in silver and mom and i ended up putting uh some rub and buff to make them a little bit more gold and match the hinges aren't they just a gem we had these knobs so we're going with them <laughs> We're getting loony and we're putting loons on the project. Although I will say it's very Canadiana. Like it's very loony. Wait, is that why we call our loonies loonies? Because there's a loon on them? Canadians suck. One, two, three, four. Canada deserves more money. <laughs> Just moving on. So we're gonna install this. Wow. With this, it doesn't fit. <laughs> We did run into a bit of a snag with our door installation plan. When I created my original plan, it was using three quarter inch plywood, but with the change in plywood size, the hardware didn't quite fit the same way. Like I couldn't put two hardware pieces side by side. So we kind of had to pivot the plan and I ended up removing the doors I installed first and opted just to install doors on the two outside cabinets versus all four. I thought aesthetically this would look the nicest. However, to do that, we did need that 5 8 inch doubled up, so I needed to add a piece to the ends to help accommodate for that bracket clearance, but luckily we had some extra cutoffs from the plywood that allowed me to do this for both sides. This wasn't ideal at all, but it was a solution and ultimately it was just this was going to look the best. So I got those pieces installed on both sides and I got those doors installed. We're rolling with the punches here, friends. <laughs> friends it is a cozy morning in the cottage life it's so sunny out uh it just feels like a breath of fresh air in this wide open land of fresh air <laughs> really that didn't really make much sense when you say it out here this is looking fabulous mom and i worked so hard we were up at like 6 a.m and we were doing touch-ups on the paint job. We got the knobs on. We, we hung up this cute little shelf. Look at this. Look how cute this shelf is. It's like a rustic piece of board and these old school L brackets, absolutely stunning. Now we're kind of just getting ready to bring this whole space together. I wanna show you the first item I thrifted for this little makeover and it's right here. Look at this beautiful chair. This chair was only 200 bucks at the ReStore. It was a steal. It's beautiful leather. I'm gonna pull this apart because I wanna show you guys. It actually reclines, so there's, a little, there's little knobs on the back that you can change around to either make it a sit-up or a recliner. So, you know, if you're having a cozy reading corner and you wanna get back, uh, pull it back, you can. And look, they have little wheels, little caster gold wheels on the front. How cute is that? This is such a good chair for this corner. It feels kind of like masculine, very cottagey, but I think, I think it's gonna be a great reading chair for you. But let me show you what else we have. 
So we've got some items that are gonna go on the shelf. Look at this though. So I also got this at the ReStore. This is a beautiful copper light that hangs. It actually has a little white shade. I don't know what happened to the white shade. It's got a little white shade that hides the light bulb under here. It's so beautiful and it makes like the nicest like looking light. So I'm so excited to hang this up. And we've pulled some of mom's stuff here, some photos. Oh, there's some more photos over here. Oh, we got a duck decoy. How cottagey is that? Once we get all of the books up on the shelf, we're gonna be like hanging little picture frames on the corners and just like making little moments. And I think it's gonna be so cute with the little picture frames. Great idea. This is gonna be so good. So we're just gonna start decorating, bringing this space together. And then finally we get to like celebrate and <laughs> drink a cup of tea. Mom and I started in the bar cabinet area. She had this beautiful old spool of copper wire, which like in and itself was aesthetic, but we used this to install these vintage wood spoons on the wall. This was such a fun decorative moment and they were so beautiful as a statement on the wall in this area. And then second to that, she had this wood bowl that was styled with these colored balls. And so we just placed this below and oh, so beautiful. In the cozy chair corner, we hung this fish art piece <laughs> she loved and this candle sconce with a faux candle in it. I love how realistic this candle looked. If, if I can find it, I will put it in the description box. So beautiful and it just added such a cozy rustic vibe to the corner. From there, we hung the copper light over the chair. This light was just perfection for this cottage space. A total statement piece. After that, we got started on tackling all the books. Oh my goodness, so many books to display in style. We really focused on the vintage books displayed up top, paired with some cute decor pieces, and the more modern and paperback books down below in the open cubbies. I was definitely trying to play with height and creating some books on a vertical while some laid horizontal. You just kind of have to play with it a lot and figure out what looks the best. I, I think mom and I were pretty happy with the way we ended it. We were going for a very eclectic look. So I think we got there. We also hung up the adorable mini vintage frames on the cross sections of the bookshelf. Such a fun and unique way to display art. I added this beautiful plaid blanket and textured pillow to the chair. And this vintage Turkish rug to the floor, which gave this entire space such a pop of color and just complemented the green tone so well. Oh, just beautiful. And the last element I placed was this beautiful nautical boat art piece that I found at my local thrift shop for $6.99. Such a find and just, it just, it was a vibe. It was a vibe. Well, DIY friends, what a transformation. In a little under four days, my mom and I took this very rustic looking dark corner of her cabin and completely transformed it into a bright, functional, organized, cozy reading nook for her to enjoy in those cold winter days ahead. We gave her storage and a place to display all the books that needed a home. I love all the decor we added to this piece that made the shells feel worldly and eclectic, just the way we like it. It's definitely our style. And I just loved doing this with my mom. And I just I feel so proud of her for stepping outside her comfort zone, feeling empowered to pick up a tool and create a space that she loves. We made a good team and most importantly, we laughed and just enjoyed this time together doing the things that we love. This corner is now such a lovely space to sit down with a blanket and a cup of tea and just lose yourself to a good book. It's absolute bliss.
Well, cheers. Oh, cheers. <laughs> a oh. cozy cup of coffee for a cozy corner to read in. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness, it's such a transition. It's absolutely it's yeah. stunning. This was a transformation for sure. Oh my goodness, so much work. We yeah. worked so hard. That was a lot of work. Yeah, it was fun though. Yeah. Always is fun. It just came together. It's beautiful. It's I'm glad that you decided we should paint it, and yeah. I think it just it transformed this corner. It looks so color. warm. I love the green. It's yeah. gorgeous. I just this is very cottage core. Oh. We are we're purely cottage coring right now, <laughs> <laughs> but it's cozy. But you guys should let me know what did you think of the transformation? What was your favorite part, or what would you have changed about Mum's cozy eclectic corner? Comment down below. Sending so much love to my Patreon family. Thank you so much for, ooh, I almost knocked her tea there. <laughs> Thank you so much for your constant support and love. And if you're looking for a community of DIYers to cheer you on or give you ideas, then that is definitely the place for you. We're getting close to the holidays, so happy holidays, happy friends. Holidays. And cheers. cheers. Stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye. Bye. What's your first book you're gonna read? I don't know. Something cozy. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You need like a really good like murder mystery thriller. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah.